The following broadcast is for educational and entertainment purposes only. While Kirk Shepard is a therapist, he's probably not your therapist. So this production should not be considered a replacement for therapy. If you are in need of professional counseling, please use a resource like psychologytoday.com, your primary care physician, or one of the many online therapy services available. If you are in crisis or having a psychological emergency, please seek assistance from your closest emergency room. And now, happy Monday! Happy Monday! Happy Memorial Day! Hello, everybody! Welcome to the show. Good to see you. My name, of course, is Kirk Shepard. I am your host every Monday morning, live 9.30 a.m. on Facebook and YouTube and Twitch and LinkedIn and wherever you get live streams. Here I am talking to you about three things. Gratitude, affirmation, and productivity, and we are back at it even on this holiday morning. You see I'm wearing my Hacksaw Jim Duggan Memorial Day short shirt. I wear this twice a year. Memorial Day and Independence Day, maybe Veterans Day, but I'll also wear it if I ever meet Hacksaw Jim Duggan in person again, because I did meet him uh, last February on the wrestling cruise that I was on. He was there wearing this exact shirt with his face all over his own body, which cracked me up to no end. Hey, good morning. Happy Monday. Make sure you check out KirkShepard.com. So much great content there for you to check out, including a weekly blog that posts 8.30 a.m. on Monday mornings and typically ties in somewhat to what we're talking about on the live stream. You also can email me here at info at happymondaywithkirkshepard.com with any comments, thoughts, questions, or most importantly, if you would like to be a guest on the broadcast. I am working very diligently to line up some really amazing guests. Got a few things already in the works, a few other things that I'm hoping are going to happen, and I can't wait to uh, bring you more content and conversations with folks who have overcome things, who are succeeding at things, or who are just happy. That's kind of the goal of Happy Monday. Speaking of things that are happy, uh, yesterday I spoke at a church called The Open Table. It is an LBGTQ plus church, uh, affirming church in Mason. And I was a, a speaker for mental health awareness month and talked about all kinds of things. Uh, they wanted me to combine my wrestling career with mental health awareness and my own life journey. So I did that and that actually will be released on Thursday morning as a bonus episode of this podcast. So if you're listening to this, uh, as a podcast, check it out Thursday. I'll drop that, uh, that talk uh, as a podcast audio only this Thursday morning. Uh, also, I was able to go to Kings Island this weekend on Saturday, hung out with my friend Connie, who uh, we do that Kirk and Connie's Epic Adventures podcast together every week as well. Uh, we had a great time. I rode Adventure Express though, and I feel like I was in a car wreck. I really was sore. I learned uh, something. So I learned a couple things. I get a front of the line pass every visit, one front of the line pass, uh, every visit at Kings Island because of my prestige plus pass that I have to the park. And so I used it for adventure express, which had reopened that day. And, uh, that was good except it, uh, tore up my knees because they put me in the second row. And what I realized from looking is the front row has plenty of leg room. I, or, you know, more leg room than what I had in the second row. The second row has a seat, that pushes into the leg, area, the leg area that I was in. And so my knees were tight and it was a mess. So it hurt. I, it was not very pleasant and not very fun. So I might try to get in the front row, but otherwise I may be using that front of the line pass for something a little less thrilling. We'll see. Um, so yeah, hey, it's Memorial Day. I want to take a minute to thank our servicemen, and we'll talk about that in our gratitude section a little bit later. But make sure you don't forget those who paid the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom today as we look back on that. Uh, you know what? I think it's time for some good news. I found this really amazing article, um, actually from the Today Show, and I wanted to share this story with you. It's, it's truly um, inspiring. 
1994, when Jamie West was 12 years old, she was thrown out. She was out on her own, living on the street after a tumultuous beginning of her childhood. Saving graces were few and far between. I was in 94 foster homes, six shelters, a group home, and a treatment center when they ran out of places to keep me, she told Today.com. There were no beds, and by that time I realized the system was probably going to kill me, so I took off on my own. West says she first went into the foster care system in Arizona at four years old when her parents, who were both struggling with drug and alcohol addiction, couldn't care for her any longer. I was born to two adults who should have had to apply for a license in order to procreate. Then the Arizona CPS system in the 80s was really bad, like really, really bad, Wes says, adding that her time in the system led to some very dangerous situations. I had been running away for a few years prior, and by the time I was 12, I figured how to not run back into the system and stay out. At 12, she did that. As a preteen, West stayed in the Mill Avenue homeless encampment in Tempe, Arizona, an area known for its unhoused population with other kids like her. We slept underneath the Mill Avenue Bridge and looked out for each other as best we could. West says she felt lost at this time, but a conversation with a spiritual man led her to want to find herself as she left Arizona, finding herself in California, where she met a member of counterculture group, the Rainbow Family, who showed her kindness. West says she stayed with the group for almost two years, but her journey wasn't over. After a while, I ended up getting really sick, and I realized that once again, I was making life choices that were going to end up killing me, she says, adding that she was around 15 when she left California, traveling around the country while picking up odd jobs and farm work. I'd hitchhike from one place to another to find work and just rambled across the country, Wes says. I had been hungry for over a week when I came across my first White Castle. Wes says she can't be sure of the exact location, but it was a White Castle somewhere in the South. She says the other fast food chains and restaurants would sometimes not even allow her entry into the building, but this time things went very differently. I walked into White Castle, the first one I had ever seen, and this woman goes, oh sugar, you poor thing, you go on in that bathroom and get yourself cleaned up. And so I did, Wes says. I cried in the bathroom because I was being treated like a human. While she was in the bathroom, the White Castle employee had bagged every burger cooking on the grill, placing each and every one in bags for the teen. Wes started to make a fuss about getting that much food for free, but the Good Samaritan wasn't having it. She said she was going to throw them away anyway, and so it was best to go feed somebody. Adding the woman poured her three glasses of ice water to go with the food. After eating a bit in the store, she split the rest with others, estimating that it was about three days worth of food given to her for nothing. Every time after that, when I saw a White Castle, I knew it was somewhere that I would feel safe to run to, and if I was starving, I would be able to get fed. It wasn't something I wanted to take advantage of because the system was so pure, and it was such a beautiful experience to get treated like a human being. I didn't want to ruin it. She eventually found uh, an aunt to take her in at the age of 17, and she found a fellow love, and here's where the story gets very interesting. She knew a White Castle was finally being introduced into Arizona, and so she waited outside wearing a crown because she was going to come to the castle. The White Castle actually inducted this couple, her and her new love, into their Hall of Fame. Who knew White Castle had a Hall of Fame? Which ceremony led to the couple's engagement. They had a wedding at White Castle. And they were married and are happily together now because of White Castle. White Castle says, we are happy beyond words for the joy that Jamie and Drew share and honor that we were able to play a part in the greatest royal wedding ever. Jamie's story serves as a reminder of the power of kindness and being there for one another as we keep focus on our purpose of feeding the souls of craver generations elsewhere. My apologies to anybody who was watching the live stream and was interrupted. Uh, There was a Twitch streamer who just was saying really hurtful things for no reason. And it didn't, I mean, not, I didn't take it personal. He doesn't know me, but it was very distracting. And I was already, um, not feeling it this morning, uh, for some reason to, uh, come live on the air. So I was, I just decided to end the stream, but I do want to release something. And there was some good content at the beginning of this. So I wanted to finish it up and release it as a podcast anyway, for those of you who are loyal, listeners. Um, today we were talking about 
toxic people and eliminating toxic relationships from our lives. And I think it's an important thing to do. So let's talk about that for a second. I think it's really important to surround ourselves with people who uplift and inspire us. And Toxic relationships can drain our energy and hinder our growth and impede our happiness. And we're talking about Happy Monday here after all. And just like we talked about last week with decluttering our physical spaces, decluttering our lives from poisonous people can be emotionally liberating. So first thing you have to do is identify a toxic relationship. How do you notice? How do you know when this isn't working for you anymore? Toxic people often exhibit negativity and manipulation, disrespect and emotional abuse. They might drain your energy with constant complaints or put downs or create drama or exhibit controlling behavior. You got to trust your intuition and pay attention to how you feel around specific individuals. If somebody consistently leaves you feeling drained or anxious or unhappy, it might be time to evaluate the relationship's toxicity. Once you've recognized a toxic relationship, you want to assess the impact it has on your life. Reflect how that person's presence affects your mental and emotional well-being. And do they support your dreams and goals? Do they respect your boundaries or values? Are they generally interested in your happiness? Honest self-reflection will help you gain clarity and determine whether the relationship is worth salvaging with boundaries or whether they have to go. You've got to sometimes distance yourself from toxic people by limiting contact or reducing interactions or sometimes cutting ties altogether. In order to do that, you need to surround yourself with positive influences and seek support from trusted friends or family or your therapist. Letting go of those toxic relationships can be very challenging, but it's a courageous step towards personal growth and a healthier life. You deserve to be treated the way you want to be treated. And I think we teach people how to treat us. So if you set appropriate boundaries, and if you say, no, this is not okay, and you take appropriate action when you need to, you will declutter toxic people from your life. Yeah? Pretty important stuff. And the reality is, in this affirmation section, that you deserve to be treated well. That you deserve the best possible treatment. You are worthy of love and belonging. You deserve that. So do it. Make sure you don't have toxic people in your life. Eliminate those negative relationships because you deserve better. Fair enough? Well, I think we should meditate and then we should call it a day. Yeah? So let's get ourselves in that right spot, the right place. Breathe in. Breathe out. In. And out. And today I want you to think about what your life would be like if you were only surrounded by people that you love and who love you back with the same ferociousness. Picture yourself in a room with those people who love you no matter what. How does that feel? Are you allowing yourself to be open and to receive that love? Are you allowing yourself to be vulnerable with those folks? Picture a world in which you are only surrounded by people who treat you the way you deserve. You deserve this. Embrace it. Feel it. Can you picture them hugging you, if that's your thing? Smiling at you? Affirming you? Just being with you? Whatever it is that you need today, from the support system you have, I hope that you're able to get it. When you're ready, come back to reality. Keep breathing, and we'll wrap things up. 
Appreciate you hanging out with me here on Happy Monday. Sorry that the live stream didn't go the way I'd hoped. Uh, however, we will try again next week live. Plus, don't forget this Thursday, that special a bonus episode will drop uh, with some interesting thoughts on mental health awareness and professional wrestling. It's really kind of fun. I'm glad you're here. And uh, happy Memorial Day. Thank you to our service folks. Really appreciate them. And we'll see you next week. Yeah? Have a good one. Happy Monday, everybody.